Skeletons are often depicted as one of the primary units in a necromancer's army, along with zombies. So how effective would a reanimated skeleton actually be in real combat? For the scope of this video, I'm just talking about skeleton warriors fighting against human warriors in a medieval type of setting, which is the most common setting. So the first thing to address, in my opinion, is the skeleton's weight. A skeleton accounts for about 14% of a person's body weight, so if you weigh 90 kilos or 198 pounds, that will be a 12.5 kilo or 25.7 pound skeleton. This is very light, too light to actually be effective in combat. If you've ever wrestled with someone who's much lighter than you, you'll notice just how much of an effect weight has on combat. Your average human soldier is probably going to weigh at least 60 kilos or 132 pounds if he's skinny, and probably a lot more if he's not, let alone what he would weigh once he's carrying his armor and stuff. So if a 12.5 kilo skeleton attempted to attack a human soldier, it'd be like a skinny 12 year old trying to hurt the gorilla. A line of skeletons would just be unable to hold against a line of human soldiers, because they're vastly outweighed by them. They'd also be extremely vulnerable to charges. The skeletons are just too damn light. So how do we fix this problem? Well, we've got to either accept the fact that skeletons are extremely lightweight and somehow use this to our advantage, or we must make up some system that addresses the weight problem. A way to address it might be that a skeleton has invisible magical muscle that uses the underlying bone frame. This is nice because you can say that this magical muscle has weight, it also has realistic limits to it. Just like if a human's muscles were too strong, his bones would snap under the strain. So too would the skeletons. So it's a nice kind of realistic limiter or balancer in making sure that the magical muscle isn't overpowered. Even if the magical muscle is invisible, it may provide some kind of form, which would also allow armor and stuff to sit neatly onto the skeleton, rather than having it all hanging loose and falling off which would likely be the case if you tried to dress your skeleton in human armor. If we assume that the skeleton is freshly harvested, you could expect the skeleton to be as strong as the creature was in life. All the bones found in some dusty old crypt would be weaker than fresh bones, and they've probably also been gnawed on by rodents or eaten by bone bugs or whatever else. This would mean that it would be in the necromancer's best interest to procure the strongest and freshest of components. But you know, the idea of a magical binding works just as well. You know, you've got some kind of dark magic that's holding the skeletons together and stuff, giving it its strength and all that. You can also provide some weight. And you know, any kind of attack could weaken that binding. And that way you don't have to worry about stuff like spears not having any effect on the skeleton. That spear would come in, jab, and damage the binding, weakening the skeleton reanimation. Too many jabs and the magic unravels and that skeleton crumbles to pieces. But maybe the low weight of a skeleton can actually be an advantage. If we really think outside the box on this, such a light frame could probably support flight. If you slap some nice bat-like wings on that skeleton, made from human skin or something, the chances that the skeleton could fly like Icarus might be quite high. Then you can have an air force of swooping skeletons. I've never seen that done before. Hopefully not because it's a stupid idea, but rather that no one's thought of it. The next thing to consider with skeleton warriors is, how do you actually damage one? There's hardly anything to them. Killing one with a pointy weapon like a spear or an arrow seems impossible. There's too many gaps. Standard swords, especially chopping ones with a bit of heft to them, like a falchion, would do much better. As would axes, because these weapons would probably be able to cut through the bone but it would be far less effective if the skeleton was armoured. Maces and clubs seem to be like the best choice overall. For a skeleton without armour, they'll do a good job at shattering the exposed bones, and for an armoured skeleton they at least have a hope of sending some percussive waves through the armour to damage what's below. Big weapons like pole axes, halberds, claymores and other big things should do well as well. By the way, just as an aside, I love how passionate this necromancer is. Oh, fight my minions! To me, minions, to me! Reminds me of myself. I love those Warhammer Master necromancers. Listen to this guy. 
necromancer. With haste, the summoning begins. Everywhere is death. I am master. Only an unlife will they see. You serve me. <laughs> I love those guys, man. What about armor? How effective would armor be on a skeleton? I think that giving a skeleton armor can only help it. It provide defense, but also extra weight. Especially in a world where there's no magical musculature like I described before, you need all the weight in the skeleton you can possibly provide it if you're planning on using it to fight humans in hand-to-hand -hand combat with. Armor would behave differently on a skeleton than it would on a person. Plate armor would probably hang really loosely, as opposed to on a human, where beneath the metal is a layer of padded fabric, and then the flesh blew that. On a skeleton there'd just be air there. A percussive blow to the skeleton's breastplate would make a nice gonging sound, but would probably do little damage. The only effective way would be to strike the skeleton in places where the armor rests directly over the bones, like maybe on the shoulder or the helmet, something like that. I'm no medieval combat expert or anything, but I think when a mace strikes a breastplate or other piece of plate armor, most of the damage comes from the shock wave that reverberates through it and damages the flesh below. In a skeleton there's no flesh to damage. If a spike from a mace pierces the plate somehow, and manages to hit a bone. It wouldn't do the skeleton any good, but I can't see it doing absurd amounts of damage either. So I think dealing with an armored skeleton would be trickier than dealing with a human, unless you reason that the magical muscles that animate the entire skeleton also can be damaged. If that's the case, then I can't imagine it'd be that different to fighting against a human. But all of this is assuming the armor would even stay in place. After all, armor is designed to be form-fitted to a person, and not to be worn by a skeleton. Maybe the armor could even hinder the skeleton. But in some settings there's spells and things that talk about coating a skeleton's bones in metal to make it stronger, like iron bones in Dungeons and Dragons. This should help a lot, but would also be pretty tricky to pull off. I've never poured molten metal over a bone before, trying to coat it, but it's a fair assumption that the bone would be heavily damaged by this, and may even burn up entirely, leaving you with a nice metal nugget rather than a metal coated bone. If you instead coated the bones by somehow attaching metal plates to them, this would help against things that may try to cut through the bone, but I can't see it helping much against percussive forces. Come to think of it, the best armor for a skeleton would probably be chainmail. The chainmail sort of hangs down low and conforms to the skeleton lying underneath. It's a much better option than plate mail or something. And it's also much easier than trying to coat all the skeleton's bones in metal. Just take some dead dude's chain mail and slap it on there, you're good to go. But imagine for a moment that the necromancer carefully and meticulously coats all the skeleton's bones in steel, adamantium or whatever other metal you want, to make it stronger and to add extra weight. This would permit the necromancer to make the magical muscles stronger, and cause the skeleton to be even more powerful. And because the muscles are now also larger, the skeleton is now even heavier, because stronger bones can support stronger muscles. And these muscles would of course weigh more. Now imagine you dress that skeleton in full plate armor, and you have a seriously powerful skeleton. It could weigh several hundred kilos, and maybe have gorilla level strength. It'd be an absolute juggernaut in combat. So that's about all I can think of regarding skeletons in melee combat. They would probably be effective soldiers, and better than human ones for sure, but only if you can address the weight problem. I personally think that zombies make much better soldiers than skeletons, for a whole host of reasons which I'll cover in a future video. If you didn't address the weight problem and still wanted to use skeletons as melee soldiers, it can still work, but you'd have to use unconventional tactics like maybe guerrilla style warfare and rely on the other benefits undead have like not having to sleep or eat. Let me know what you think because I don't have all the answers on this, and I've definitely overlooked something. I'm always interested to hear about how you would use the skeletons in fresh and interesting ways I had never imagined. Thanks for watching, I hope this video has given you some food for thought. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.